Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a digital transformation in Chen Restaurant Ecosystem Forum. I'm Lydia from Taicha. The forum is organized by Bureau of Foreign Trade in Taicha and co-organized by Association of Chen and Franchise Promotion Taiwan. To kickstart of today's forum, I would like to invite Mr. Akihiro Nisugi, Managing Director from Funai Consulting Incorporated, to deliver his insights regarding the digital transformation of the food and restaurant industry in Japan under the new normal. Let's welcome Mr. Akihiro Nisugi. あの、日本のフードサービス業界におけるビジネスモデル開発とディエックスですね、実践事例というところでお話しさせていただけたらと思います。私のまず簡単に自己紹介させていただきます。私はあの1974年にですね、日本の和歌山県というところで生まれました。え、大学は京都の同社大学に行きまして、え、収支課程を終了後、え、船送検に入社しております。え、元来ですね、約20年ちょっとですね、あの、日本の外食え、産業ですね、コンサルティング活動に従事しております。はい。え、それではあの、早
、まあ、この1年間、えー、我々はですね、この2つのテーマのですね、あのー、コンバージョンで、えー、企業の業績の立て直しというお手伝いをさせていただきます。えー、まずですね、我々は、あのー、このコロナの中でも、えー、比較的、あの、調子がいいですね、ビジネスモデルに転換をするというふうなご支援をさせていただいております。えー、まあ、あの業態開発ですね。そこにですね、加えて、えー、生産性を高めるための、えー、デジタルトランスフォーメーションというふうなことをですね、組み合わせてですね、えー、集客力が高くですね、えー、生産性の高いビジネスを、えー、新たに構築していこうと。えー、いうふうなご支援をさせていただいております。えー、まあ、日本の外食業界ですね。まあ、この、このコロナ、えー、1年間経つんですが、えー、非常に明暗が分かれておりまして、まず、あのー、飲食店はですね、非常に立地に左右、えー、される、えー、ビジネスですので、あのー、このコロナの中でもですね、あのー、回復が早い立地、えー、市場とですね、えー、それから回復にまだ当面ですね、時間がかかりそうな、えー、市場、えー、に大きく分けられます。えー、比較的ですね、あのー、回復が早い立地というのは、あの人が住んでるところに近いエリアですね。えー、日本ではですね、あのー、まあ、郊外ロードサイドというですね、まあ、車社会が発達しておりますので、えー、車で来店をするですね、飲食店。え、それからですね、人がたくさん住んでるエリアの、えー、駅前とかですね。まあ、こういったところはですね、あの、比較的、えー、売り上げの回復が早いんですけれども、えー、一方でですね、あの、オフィス街とか、えー、それから大きな繁華街、えー、それから観光地、空港、えー、なんかはですね、あのー、まだまだ、えー、売り上げ回復の目処が、えー、立っておりません。えー、このようなですね、立地格差が出てきています。え、それからですね、客層と利用動機によって、あの、市場の回復のスピードが、えー、差が出ておりますが、まあ、あの、家族での食事動機、それから、あの、パーソナル、えー、少人数での利用動機、えー、こんなところはですね、比較的回復が早いです。えー、それから、えー、家の中で食事をするというシーン、えー、機会が増えてますので、まあ、テイクアウトであるとか、デリバリー、え、なんかですね、比較的、あの、好調です。え、一方で、あの、企業の宴会とかですね、え、それからビジネスシーンでのですね、え、食事であったりとか、え、それから、まあ、あの、会議とか、そういった、あの、法人のですね、集まり、え、ケータリングビジネスとかですね、こういったものへの、あの、対応するですね、え、マーケットは、え、なかなかまだまだ戻ってこないと。まあ、こういうふうな状況ですので、えー、今ですね、右側に位置するような回復に時間がかかりそうな、えー、市場でビジネスをされてる、えー、プレイヤーがですね、あのー、左側のですね、回復が見られる市場へシフトをするというふうなアクションがですね、多くの、えー、外食企業で今取られております。えー、でですね、あのー、具体的な、えー、ビジネスモデル提案、えー、我々、あのー、全国で作っていってるんですけども、まあ、そのうちのですね、いくつかの、あの、まあ、再現性の高いパターンってあるんですけども、その一つ目がですね、居住地近くでの焼肉店開発というパターンですね。あの、今、あの、焼肉店はですね、あの、もともと、あの、換気のですね、店内の換気の機能が非常に高い、えー、飲食店ですので、あの、まあ、あの、空気循環が良くてですね、あの、まあ、安全性が高いと、っていうふうな、えー、見られ方も、えー、あります。で、さらにですね、あの、もともと、あの、日本人はですね、あの、牛肉をですね、あの非常にごちそうだというふうに認識してますので、まあ、その牛肉をですね、あの、まあ、ごちそうで食べに行くと、えー、いうふうなことで、焼肉店は、あの、このコロナの中でも、えー、好調です。で、えー、その中でもですね、あの、他社との、えー、他の焼肉店との差別化というふうなことを作っていく必要があるんですが、まあ、その中で日本ではですね、このコストパフォーマンスの高さというのが
、えー、非常にあの集客力に影響を与えますので、まあ、こういったところの差別化をですね、あのー、ビジネスの、えー、設計の中に組み込むということが重要になってきております。えー、そこにですね、えー、食肉販売であるとか、えー、お弁当の販売みたいなもの、機能もつけてですね、あのー、お店の中だけでの売り上げを立てるということではなくて、外へあの売るというふうなことでも売り上げを作っていくと。まあ、こんな形態がですね、今、えーまあ、再現性が高いビジネスの形態として提案させていただいております。それから二つ目、あの、冒頭でですね、居酒屋のマーケットが非常に厳しいというお話をさせていただきました。えー、こちらの事例はですね、あのー、外国人観光客が非常に、えー、来るですね、エリア、えー、だったんですけれども、えー、今ですね、あのー、外国人の観光客はピタッと止まってますから、あのー、地元のですね、日常の、えー、飲食動機を取っていく。えー、いうふうなところで、あの、ターゲットをシフトしてですね、えー、業績回復に成功して、えー、おります。えー、足元証券のですね、あのー、地元の少人数の、えー、夜の動機、えー、それからですね、あのー、お昼のお弁当、それから、えー、ランチ、えー、それからデリバリーですね。まあ、こういったですね、あのー、いろんな動機で、あのー、料理を提供していこうと、えー、いうふうな形態に書いてます。えー、ポイントはですね、あのー、夜のですね、えー、こう、店頭間口とですね、えー、昼の間口をですね、こう変えるというふうな構造にしているのが成功のポイントになっております。えー、様々なですね、居酒屋さんのですね、こう食堂化というふうな転換を、えー、今あ、全国各地でですね、進めて、えー、おりますが、あのー、今後もですね、このような形態というのはですね、日本では増えていくんだろうなというふうに見ております。えー、その転換をする際にですね、あの非常に重要になるのが、えー、ハード面ですね、えー。このリニューアルが必要なんですけれども、あのやはりあの店頭でお弁当を売っていくとか、あいう時にはですね、あの間口のところで、えー、作っているところを実演で見せると。えー、いうふうなものと、注文カウンターですね。あのー、外に向けて作ると。えー、このあたりのハードの変更が、えー、必要になります。なので、厨房の位置の変更がですね、えー、ハード面のリニューアルのポイントになります。えー、それから二つ目がですね、えー、グループでの来店動機というのが、えー、もうなくなっておりますので、一、えー、人とか二人のお客様が、えー、たくさん、あのー、使いやすいような席構成に変えると。えー、こんな2点のですね、リニューアルを入れていくのがですね、成功のポイントになります。えー、それから3番目ですね、えー、ファストフードの市場はですね、あのー、コロナの前から、えー、日本では、えー、伸びてた市場ですけども、コロナになってもですね、えー、業績が好調と、堅調だと、えー、いうふうなところで、えー、このあたりの開発をですね、進めております。えー、こちらの事例のお店はですね、今から約10年前にですね、1号店を作った、えー、焼肉丼の、えー、お店ですけれども、えー、今全国でですね、60店舗ぐらいになりましたが、えー、その10年前に作った1号店がですね、このコロナの中でですね、過去最高年収、えー、年間の売り上げをですね、達成しましたが、まあ、あのー、非常にもともと、あのー、時流的にもですね、伸びてる市場の中で、まあ、コロナがですね、逆に追い風になってる、えー、状態ですので、まあ、こういった形態をですね、あのー、作っていくというふうなところを、えー、ご提案させていただいております。えー、お弁当の、えー、もともとですね、えー、テイクアウトの、えー、需要も取れる、えー、形態ですし、さらにですね、日本はあの車社会ですので、えー、ドライブイン対応すると。え、ドライブスルーとかですね。こういった機能をつけていくのがポイントになっていくるのかなと思います。え、それから四つ目のですね、えー、ニューノロジアに対応した新規事業開発というところの四つ目ですけれども、四つ目のパターンですね。えー、もうですね、店内飲食を、えー、切り離してですね、えー、外売りに特化するという形態です。えー、写真の事例は唐揚げの専門店だったりとかですね、えー、日本人は魚をたくさん食べますので
、えー、魚のお弁当の専門店だったりとか、えー、それから、あのー、餃子ですね。あのー、餃子の、えー、テイクアウトの専門店。えー、こんなところがですね、えー、非常に、あのー、コロナの中でも、えー、好調で、えー、今、あの増えていっております。えー、それから、えー、5番目のパターンですけれども、あのー、まあ、今までのは、どちらかというと、こう、えー、立地の話だったりとか、あの利用動機、えー、という形態だったんですが、えー、このコロナの中でもですね、あのー、強い客層というのが、えー、存在することが分かってきました。えー、まあ、シニアのですね、高齢者の人たちをターゲットにしたお店よりもですね、えー、若者、えー、免疫力の高いですね。若者にターゲットを絞った、えー、お店作りをした、するとですね、えー、非常に、あのー、コロナ、えー、感染者数もですね、えー、浮き沈みの影響を受けにくいというふうな結果が出てきております。で、彼らはですね、彼女たちはですね、えー、SNS を見ながらですね、あのー、お店選びをしますので、まあ、そういった彼女たちが、発信したくなるようにですね、SNS で発信したくなるようなコンテンツをですね、業態の中に組み込むというふうなことが非常に重要になっております。こういった切り口のですね、先ほど5つぐらいのコロナの中でも堅調な市場、その中でのビジネスモデルというふうなことをですね、我々ご提案していっておるんですけれども、あのー、まあ、このコロナの中で、コロナだから好調だというふうなことだけではなくてですね、えー、できれば、あのー、コロナの前からですね、えー、好調だった市場を選択する、えー。このことが重要なのかなというふうに思っております。で、そこにですね、あのー、今後、えー、まあ、コロナの収束っていうのは言って、あの進むとは思うんですけれども、えー、ニューノーマルで対応していくというふうな要素をですね、組み込むと。まあ、こういった、えー、新しい、えー、事業の再構築をですね、えー、やっていくことが、まあ、あの、レストランビジネスのですね、立て直しになっていくのかなというふうに思います。で、それをですね、あの、国が、まあ、政府がですね、えー、補助金を出すというですね、えー、今、あの、支援もですねあの、支援策が出てきておりますので、まあ、こういった支援策なんかも活用しながら、えー、事業の再構築をしていくというふうなところが、今の日本の動きです。で、まあ、そういったですね、あの、政府の補助金を使っていく上ではですね、あの、大きな目的として、えー、付加価値率を高めるですね、えー、要は計画になっているのかどうかというふうな観点が、えー、まあ、国家政策として、えー、要求されてますので、まあ、こういったビジネスに合致していくことが重要になっております。で、えー、その中のですね、非常にあの重要な観点なんですけれども、えー、こちらの図はですね、日本のですね、えー、まあ、あの全産業の有効求人倍率というグラフになります。えー、まあ、あのー、仕事を探してる人とですね、えー、それから、あのー、働く人を求めてる、えー、事業所、えー、その割合でで,ですね、あの、倍率を出している数字ですけれども、あの、日本の全産業の中でもですね、えー、フードサービス業は非常にですね、えー、求人倍率が高かったのがですね、このコロナ前です。えー、キッチンですと 3.5 倍、えー、それからホール接客の方で約4倍、えー、というふうな倍率ですので、えー、非常にですね、あの、労働者不足、えー、働き手不足というのが、あの、このコロナ前のですね、えー、課題でした。えー、それが、まあ、コロナによってですね、あのー、まあ、あのー、事業所が、えー、非常に、あのー、売り上げが下がっていく中でですね、あのー、求人数っていうのはどんどん減っていってですね、まあ、今は、あのー、有効求人倍率というのはですね、非常に、あのー、低く、えー、収まってるんですけども、あの、日本はですね、少子高齢化という、あのー、国が抱かれ、抱えるですね、大きな構造、えー、課題が、えー、社会的にですね、あの、抱えてますので
、あの、これまたですね、経済が動き始めると、あの、人不足というのは露呈していきますので、あの、そんな中でですね、えー、いかに採用力を高めるためにあの、生産性を上げておくのかという観点が、えー、重要になってきます。で、えー、そのためにはですね、えー、原資というのが必要になってきますので、あの、収益性の高いビジネスに、えー、転換していくことが重要です。えー、収益性というのはですね、えー、飲食店、レストランビジネスの場合ですと、損益分岐点から、えー、いかに遠ざかるか、えー、離れるかというところが、あの、収益性に大きく直結しますので、えー、まあ、売上高、えー、集客力の高いですね、えー、事業をまず選択する必要があります。えー、それからですね、えー、固定費、えー、それから変動費をですね、あの少なくする。まあ、この二つのですね、アプローチで収益性というのは作られてきますので、その収益性を原資にしながら、えー、従業員さんのですね、えー、まあ、待遇面を上げていくと、えー。こんなところがですね、必要な視点になってきます。で、そのですね、まあ、あの、一つの事例をご紹介させていただきますと、こちらはですね、あの、冒頭であのご紹介したあコロナの中でもですね、非常に堅調なあのビジネスの一つの焼肉という、えー、業態ですけれども、あの、集客力を最大化、えー、売上高を最大化するためのですね、えー、視点を、えー、詰め込んでます。えー、まずは立地環境、えー、人が住んでるエリアに近い、えー、それから、えー、和牛をですね、えーまあ、非常にリーズナブルな価格で販売するというコスパですね。えー、それから、えー、複数の動機でお店を使っていただこうというところで、えー、食肉の物販をしたりとか、あとは、あの、パーソナルユースですね。少人数一人でも焼肉が食べれるというスタイルの、えー、まあ、一人焼肉の提案とかですね。まあ、こういったことをすることによって、集客売上高を最大化するというふうな視点です。そこにですね、えー、精進化のシステムを入れていくことで、えー、まあ、あの生産性を上げようということなんですけれども、まあ、あのー、ありとあらゆるですね、デジタルツールとかですね、えー、を使っていきます、えー。ウェイティングのシステムであったりとか、えっと、スマートフォンで注文する携帯であったりとか、えー、それから飲み物をですね、えー、セルフのサーバーを、あのー、お客様のテーブルに設置することで、セルフで、えー、ドリンクを作ってもらったりとか、えー、あとドリンクバーであったりとか、それから、あのー、回転寿司のようにですね、えー、料理の提供、配膳レーンを使ってやったりとかですね、えー、それからバッシングの方は、あのー、ロボット、えー、にさせるということですね。えー、それから会計のところはセルフのレジであったりとか、まあ、みたいなところの組み合わせをあの駆使することによって、えー、より少ないあの、労働時間数で、えー、売り上げを作っていくと。えー、いうふうな、えー、ことをですね、組み合わせた、えー、モデルを、えー、ご提案させていただいております。えー、それから日本ではですね、えー、先ほど、あのー、マッシング用、えー、下膳用にですね、ロボットを使っているというお話をしましたが、もともとですね、あのー、配膳用のロボット、えー、でして、えー、料理の提供にですね、あのー、まあ、ロボットを使うというところが、えー、今年から広がりつつあります。で、そうなった時にですね、あのー、ロボットが活躍しやすい環境、ハード面の環境を整えるということでですね、えー、まあ、我々ロボットフレンドリーというふうな言い方をしますが、そういったハンド面のリニューアルをですね、えー、組み込んでいくというところが、まあ、生産性向上につ,あのつながっていくというところです。で、えー、逆にですね、まあ、あの、料理の運搬はですね、ロボットに、えー、担わせてですね、えー、人間はですね、お客様、えー、に対する接客、えー、なんかをですね、強化することによって、えー、満足度を上げていこうと。まあ、こういうですね、人とロボットの、えー、共生と、えー、いうふうなアプローチの、えー、にチャレンジするレストランなんかも、えー、徐々に、えー、出てきております。で、えー、まあ、あのー、生産性の高いレストランビジネスという観点なんですが、まず一つ目はビジネスモデルですね。立地や規模、それからどんな業態がコロナに強いのか、それから内外装どうするのか、コストパフォーマンスどうするのか。こういったですね、あの視点を持ちながら
、えー、お客様とのコミュニケーション、マーケティング活動のデジタル化、それから店舗内のオペレーションのデジタル化、それから従業員さんのですね、えー、マネジメントのデジタル化。まあ、こういったものを組み合わせていくことによって、え、収益性、生産性の高いレストランビジネスに昇華させていこうと。え、いうふうなご提案を進めております。え、ホームとのコミュニケーションもですね、まあ今回この講演も、あの、ズームという機能を使ってさせていただいておりますが、え、遠隔でのコミュニケーションもですね、あの、非常に、え、やりやすいツールがですね、整ってきております。非常に精度の高いですね、クラウドのカメラなんかも、えー、備わってきておりますので、まあ、こういったものを駆使しながら、えー、本部とですね、えー、現場をですね、デジタルでつなぐと、えー。こんなご提案もさせていただいております。えー、それから集客面もですね、あのー、まあ、日本にはグルメサイトと言われる、あの、ポータルサイトがたくさんプラットフォームがあるんですけれども、えー、一方でですね、あの、オウンドメディア、えー、の評価がですね、非常に、あのー、傾向率を高めることが分かってきておりますので、えー、自社サイト。で、そこからの予約の流入。えー、それから、えー、顧客管理ですね。なんかもですね、あのー、日本には LINE という、あのー、非常に、あのー、ユーザー数の多いアプリがありますので、まあ、こういったものを使ってですね、えー、自社メディアというところでの、あのー、顧客とのコミュニケーションをですね、えー、高めていくと。えー、こんなところを、えー、まあ、進めていっております。えー、最後になります。えー、このニューノーマル時代に対応した経営計画づくりというところが、今、日本の外食企業の中では、えー、非常に、あの、必須になってきておりまして、まあ、もう本当、コロナ前に立てたですね、経営計画が、えー、もう意味をなさなくなっておりますので、まあ、新しいですね、中期の目線、長期の目線での、事業戦略の見直し、えー。そこの核になるのがですね、えー、ビジネスモデル開発とですね、えー、立地戦略の見直しになります。えー、それから二つ目が、えー、レストランサービス業はですね、どこまで行っても、あのー、DX を、えー、進めつつもですね、あのー、人材戦略というのが重要になってきますので、まあ、あのー、人がですね、今、あのー、有効求人バイトの下がって採用がしやすい、えー、時期になってますから、えー、この期間にですね、組織の若返りをですね、一気に、えー、進めるというふうな、あのー、採用活動、えー、それから、あのー、待遇面の改善、えー、みたいなところに投資をすると。で、そこにですね、あの、デジタルを絡めていくと。えー、いうふうなところがですね、あのー、重要なんじゃないかなというふうに思っております。はい、えー、駆け足になりましたが、えー、日本のですね、えー、今のフードサービス業界、に対応するですね、えー、まあ、課題とですね、対応策、えー、というところでお話しさせていただきました。えー、どうもご清聴ありがとうございました。Thank you very much, Mr. Akihiro Nisugi, for your insights. Next, it's our honor to have Mr. Ho Jin Park, Secretary General from Korea Franchise Association. Share with us his observation on the digital transformation of the food and restaurant industry in Korea facing COVID 19. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ho Jin Ma. I am Secretary General of the Korean Franchise Association. First of all, I would like to thank you, Titra, for giving the great opportunity to show the change and effort Korean franchise industry to the Taiwanese consumer. Today's presentations. I am going to explain the change we have met and the challenge we have tried to overcome the pandemic. My presentation consists of the,、uh, three subjects. First part is the status and the change Korean franchise industry. The second one is digital transformation and the business innovations. Lastly, I want to demonstrate your case of the digital transformation in Korea. Korea franchise industry has been steadily grown by nearly 20% to the 30% over the past five years. According to the last year's record, Korea has over 5,000 franchisees and 6,000 brands. The number of the franchisees is about 270,000. It is nearly huge numbers, isn't it? In terms of the market size, Korea has become the second or third largest. 
countries in the world. However, new challenges that we have never experienced are coming recently. As you see the graph, the growth rate of the each items has steadily decreased. There are several reasons. Among them, the biggest one is consumption through the non-face-to-face ways such as online delivery and HMR, home meal replacement, meal kit has rapidly developed and increased. It leads to the increase of the non-franchise accessibilities. Consumer feeling afraid of the virus do not want to contact the people in the open place and eat, eat the meal alone at home. The best solution to meet the consumer worries is reduce the face-to-face -face contact point as possible. By technology and the service such as robot and the kiosk smart order at the table. So Korean franchises need to innovate its management. However, 92% of franchises are SME, small and medium-sized companies. It means we do not, we do not seriously lack of the innovation capabilities. In particular, in the year of the first industrial revolution, franchise industry also need digital transformation innovation. But a lot of the companies are not prepared in the manpower and experience. According to the, our recent survey, 92% of franchisors do not have the professional workers and 73% do not use any kind of the high technology in doing their business. In order to the solve such problems and enter the future-oriented industry, management innovation through digital transformation should take place actively throughout the business sectors, not only manufacturing, but also consumer service. Therefore, we are currently trying to make a much effort to enhance the competitiveness of the industry. Now let's talk about the digital transformation and the business innovation introduced in the Korean market. First of all, what is the digital transformation? Digital technology refer to the ICT technology, such as big data, AI, robotics, IoT, and unmanaged transportation. It digital transformation that brings innovation to the management by combining these technology. Innovative necessity for the survival are inevitable in many sectors. The most important background are demographic change. Single person household is dramatically increasing, amount to the nearly 30% of the total Korean householders. In addition, house economy consumed, consumed at home increased due to the COVID-19. 68% of the 20s and 62% of the 30s surveyed said that they are eating at home alone. Furthermore, increasing rate of the non face to face consumption is found out all ages, not only young generations. You can say that home economy is already established as a consumer cultures rather than a contemporary phenomenons. The industry have to prepare the non face to face sales and have to find out the ways to catch the changing consumer trend. In fact, 70% to 90% of the companies using the digital technology, such as a mobile app and a smart order system, have satisfied with their high performance and result. Also, nearly to 60% of the survey respondent are willing to using the digital technology in the future. Okay, in these chapters, I'm going to show you the various examples of the already introduced in the Korean market. Here are various cooperative robotics currently operating in the franchise store. Let's see the video.
Global Barista is very popular in Korea now. Select the coffee you want and pay the kiosk and uh, cooperate with robot, brew the coffee and uh, serve it in the 40 seconds automatically. Second, it is source digital robot. This robot recognizes the, the type of the pizza and automatically drizzle the light source and put it in put it in the ovens. Last, this one is a chicken frying robot. It is very attractive that if you it, it can fry several chickens constantly without the rest. And it is very innovative to prevent accident in the hot and the dangerous frying kitchens. In addition, there are many robot cafe which can operate 24 hours without the labors. labors. Beauty salon that consumer can see the health style in advance through the smart mirror. Convenient store that a buyer can purchase the good only by touching the, his hand, no cash and no card. Management innovation using big data and AI are developed by the public and the private sector. Uh, this, uh, my, present, uh, my franchise is a total franchise platform, which is a partnership with the Korean Franchise Association. It utilizes a huge amount of the big data to show the distrib distribution of the all franchise store operating Korean market on the map. You can check out the population and their current consumer tendency that if you want to do to, to in the business. Now, this is called Maptics, commercial analysis service at the SK Telecoms, the number one telecommunication company in Korea. They also have a partnership with our association, KFA. Big data gathered by the telephone and the end users providing the floating populations at usage patterns and uh, the estimated sales and uh, store attractiveness by through the AI analysis. Korea government are carrying out the data voucher project worth of the 123 billion Korean won this year to spread out the use of the, the big data. KFA is also seeking to the support a digital transformation of our members with working closely with our government. We actively participate in the process of the revising IT and online delivery related law for consumer advantage and to protect mem uh, members' digital business environment. Uh, Korea is one of the fastest and highly developed countries in the world in terms of digital technology. I hope Taiwan and the Korea franchise industry can share their various experience and information with each other and grow together. Thank you for the listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Park, for your sharing. Next, let's welcome Mr. Zhao Renhuang, Director General of Commerce Development Research Institute to share with us his insights about the digital transformation of the chain restaurant industry in a low-touch economy. 各位参加论坛的好朋友 那这个改变呢，包括企业，包括社会，包括国家、个人。哦，那这些整个一个产业的布局，影响到每个消费行为跟你的创新。所以我们看到台湾非常多的媒体，包括报章、杂志呢，在思考，就是说，哎，怎么
还有整个企业的一个未来的一个走向哦。那 COVID-19 新冠肺炎发生之后，它的危机代表是什么？它是又是一个危险，又是一个机会。那当我们面对危险的时候，你的总部你怎么去运用什么样的技术、什么样的科技、什么样的管理去应对？那我想，我们今年的论坛呢，已经有提出一个非常重要的一个标题哦，就是所谓智慧化、数位化，怎么去让整个连锁加盟的啊餐饮服务业能够在国内呢能够壮大，甚至于在国外呢能够去做一个延伸哦。那这些东西里面就是隐含着一个机会，所以呢，就是说我们怎么去凝聚这些的一个生态系，让大家大概来这会一起来打拼哦。所以呢，我们论坛的另外一个非常重要的主题就是一个生态系啊、哦。那这会来帕米亚这个概念呢，这不只是说，哎，我是做餐饮的连锁加盟，或者是说我是做饮料的连锁加盟，或者是其他生活服务业的连锁加盟。那过去呢，在新冠肺炎发生之后呢，你的过去的管理或者是说你运用的工具已经不足以哦产生。怎么去应应整个一个市场哦？所以这个标这个标题里面呢，就是哎，打开边那这会来怕不？所以你必须要结合什么东西？支付业者，你可能必须要你的供应链呢，你必须要做一个重整的工作。那另外呢，你的内部的员工呢，必须要做技术的提升。除了你在原来的店面的服务之外呢，你店里面的员工呢，也必须要强化你在线上。特别是在数位化工具的应用，因为大家不出门了，低接触的，甚至于就说，哎、欸，我只要在我的手机按一按，我在平板按一按，或者我的电脑的按一按的一个按键式的一个订购。那订购单进来了之后呢，你怎么去接触到你的消费者？如果你不这么去做的话呢，你就不足以应应整个一个市场的一个需求哦。所以呢，这个封面里面呢，就提到说，哎、欸，大概来这会要来怕表，就是我们。论坛的另外一个非常重要的次子题，就是说你的生态系怎么去重整，怎么去再来做一个建立哦，这是一个做一个开场白的一个部分哦。那整个一个新冠肺炎对整个国际市场产生了什么样的一个变化哦？那这些变化里面呢，也带给我们非常多的一个醒思哦。那这些醒思的部分呢，就是哎。消费者需要在一个非常安全的环境之下呢，进行整个一个消费的行为。那在消费的行为里面呢，你提供的品相是不是健康的？那你的品牌是不是信任的？所以呢，在这样的一个新商业、新服务的环境之下，我的连锁总部怎么去导入这样的所谓的数位应用相关的科技，来实践整个一个来电的消费也好。或者是线上跟线下这样的一个多元服务的一个内容哦，所以我们要强调的部分就是说，啊，未来的消费者也好，或者是未来的你的服务形态也好，你都必须要所谓执行所谓的混合型的联合总部跟你的连锁加盟组的相关的这些的应用。如果你没有准备好的话，哎，不不好意思哦，你可能会遭到整个一个被改变。或者是被取代，甚至被淘汰的这些的影响哦，所以这些整个的一个啊、呃、消费的一个形态，或者是说消费行为的一个觉醒，所以我们看到目前有很多个啊、呃、新科技或者新服务的一个产生哦，所以对于连锁加盟总部来看的话，哎，很多所谓的共享经济这样的名称名称跑出来了，那另外呢，也有所谓的平台经济。的概念也跑出来了。那最重要的部分呢，就是透过平台经济所产生的无接触下的经济的行为。那这些东西里面都在冲击整个一个连锁加盟产业。下一个阶段你要走什么方向的一个整体的一个构思哦。所以呢，我们看到就是说，哎，不管是在欧美日这些先进国家，因为封城，他们在集思里面就说，哎，我怎么去找到我的解决的一个方式哦？我的解决方案的一个方法是什么？那或许呢？有人就说：“哎、欸，我可以采取所谓的无人商店的一个解决。”那无人商店或者是少人化，透过你的一个数位的一个服务或者是机器的服务来提供这样的一个安全的，不管你在所谓的虚拟的厨房也好，或者是说无店面式的一个厨房也好，能够透过这样的一个接单呢，产生这样的一个服务呢。
如果没有这样的一个构思的话，你在整个一个产业的布局呢，可能会去面临到一个非常大的一个挑战哦。所以呢，我们要强调的部分就是，在整个一个新冠肺炎之下呢，我们的连锁加盟总部呢，必须要在安全、健康、信任的环境之下，你怎么去应用你在智慧化或者是科技化相关的运用呢？你对于连锁加盟总部的。竞争力能够去做相对的一个提升哦。那提升的方式呢？你的产业的一个生态系呢？你必须要去做到整个一个整合哦。所以呢，我们后面呢会看到一些案例哦，因为我们知道就是哎，连连锁加盟总部呢，有些哎，我的资源有限呐、啊，因为你要做这一块的部分呢，你必须要去投注非常多的一个资源去整理这一块呢。但是呢，因为整个一个。呃，新冠肺炎之后呢，对消费者的行为也好，或者是店面的经营管理也好，都已经完全去做整体的一个改变了。这些都是我们要去去去发现的哦。所以呢，我们今天要讲的部分就是说，在这样的一个呃后疫情或者是新冠肺炎的一个时代里面呢，联合任何一家的一个联合总部呢，你的思路呢都必须要正确哦，而且呢，你必须要做到对的一个道路上，那这样呢，你才能够赚到对的一个钱哦。所以呢，我们强调说，哎、欸，投资，投资最最重要的部分就是说，哎、欸，我的投资报酬率是什么东西哈、哦？那这些的一个思考的方向就是说，哎、欸，你怎么去找到你的市场哦？那我们发现说，哎、欸。因为现在的一个低接触的一个经济的环境之下，哎，人与人之间，店家跟店家，或者是消费者群聚呢，因为各国的法规也好，或者已经慢慢形成一个习惯哦，所以市场呢越来越模糊化。那这模糊化的概念呢，就是说，哎，有些人到来电消费的，那有些人呢是在线上消费的，所以来电跟线上消费这些的一个一个族群呢，已经跟你过去的一个族群已经改变了。所以我们说，哎，这个市场呢越来越模糊了哦，而且呢。不同的啊、呃，经营的一个品相的一个部分呢，也会进入到你的市场呢，做跟你的一个竞争哦。所以呢，市场是是模糊的，而且市场是越来越混合的，而且呢，市场在改变中哦。所以在这几个前提之下，我们的连锁加盟总部，特别是台湾这一块，我们过去呢这二二十几年来，我们看到台湾的连锁加盟总部从量变到质变，到现在在国际上的一个竞争哦，特别是餐跟饮这一块，已经是。在品牌呢，不断的在做一个提升哦，所以在更在在整个一个啊新冠肺炎发生的一个世代里面呢，我们最强调的是什么？你一定要做所谓的一个破坏式创新呢。那所谓的破坏式创新呢，在疫情跟疫后，你这破坏创破坏式的创新，你可以慢慢走哦。但是呢，在新冠肺炎发生之后，因为封城的行为哦。你要不要去做你自己本身的一个破坏式创新？那所谓的破坏式创新，并不是说要把你的公司全部的结构去打掉，你必须要找出你的成新的成长点出来哦。那这新的成长点势必要去接住，借助整个一个数位科技相关的这样的一个应用。所以我们强调就是说。在这样的一个环境之下呢，公司是在改变的，公司是在转型的，公司是在数位化的，所以你必须要透过这样的一个转型，透过这样的生态系里面呢，你才能够去取得什么市场上的一个信任哦，而且呢，你的公司的总部的治理呢，能够更加的一个透明化。那后续呢，我们会看到怎一些的一个加盟的一个总部。的典范呢，它是怎么去达到这一块的一个处理的一个方式哦？那在整个一个智慧化或者是数位化的一个呃餐饮的连锁总部，我们要看到就是说，哎，你的这样的一个生态系，或者是说你的经营管理要去怎么去处理哦？那总部要处理几个利害关系人，我们知道这呃有连锁总部，有你的直营店，也有你的加盟店。那最重要的部分呢，就是你必须要去面对你的消费者。那现在的环境改变了，就是哎、欸，人也不出门了，那来电的消费的族群的的人数呢在减少当中，那我怎么去让我的市场透过什么样的技术跟什么样的管理呢，去做怎么啊什么样的一个延伸，也不让因为疫情呢我受到一个损失哈，而且能够让我的营收非常重要的能够去增加，而且呢。我的投资报酬率也能够去增加，那最重要也能够回馈到整个总部、加盟店主，而且呢，你的伙伴、你的员工哦。那这些东西里面非常重要的一个概念，就是说，你必须要建立一个平台来当做你的一个服务的一个概念。那这些平台的概念就是说，哎、欸。
，这边智慧化，你必须要收集你的来电的一个消费者，包括他的数据、他的偏好等等之类的。那透过你的整合型的系统的知识服务，做有系统的一个分析。那这些东西里面，我说我加盟总部说，我可能没有这些能量啊。但是呢，就是我，诚如我们刚刚所提到的，现在整个一个智慧化下的一个连锁加盟总部的生态系在改变中，所以呢，也诚如我们刚刚前面的一个啊、呃、封面的一个介绍，说大概爱来倒卡倒去，大家要来做做火哈，智慧哦,哦来做一个改变，所以你可以去招募非常多的。不同专业的资资服务业者来共创这样的一个生态系跟一个服务的一个内容哦，所以呢，我们看到就是说，哎，整个低接触下的一个数位正在转型，那这些转型的部分也在改变我们整个一个世界哦，所以我们看到就是这个世界的一个部分，哎，在这个世界我们怎么去看这样的一个产业的一个服务创新跟它的一个策略哦，那这个策略的部分，第一个你一定要去发现说，哎。原来消费者的行为已经在改变了。那消费者的行为在改变，在疫情之后，大家不出门，或者是我来电数减少的，那你我要解决什么痛点？那这些的痛点里面呢，我有什么一个方案？所以这些的东西里面呢，你必须要找适合找到解决的方案。那这些的东西就也是整个一个创新的一个策略的一个思维。那你有这样的一个创新的思思维之后呢，你才能够为你的总部。找到新的定位，而且呢，你的竞争力会进入到另外一层的一个一个一个内容哦。那怎么样去达到我们刚刚所提到的，在疫情之后，你的创新，你能够去找到市场的痛点，而且呢，你找到对的一个解决方案哦。那首先呢，你必须要很透明化的，而且是很迫切性的，透过你的财务报表也好，或是经营的报表里面，或者是来电的一个消费者，甚至于你的直营店或者是加盟店。的一个问卷，你要确认，就说，哎、欸，我什么样的议题，而且呢，市场的需求是什么？那这样的一个过程里面，好，那我下一个阶段我要找我的伙伴的时候呢，我会，你会挑选说，哎、欸，你的伙的伙伴，如果就说，哎、欸，传统的能力是有的，那再来呢，就说年轻化，在整个数位化，整个数位化的应用，我怎么去做一个辨识啊、哦？那辨识完之后，我怎么透过数位化的应用，我做一个非常有效率？的一个沟通，包括人流、物流、资讯流，透过这样的一个平台或者是资讯化的部分，我能够及时的一个去掌掌握哦，那建立一个非常完整的一个沟通的一个架构跟沟通的流程。那这个东西里面，我们可以找出痛点，我们可以找出解决方案，那我们可以去做一个运用型的一个科技，而且呢，我们是采取我们刚刚所提到的混合型的连锁加盟总部。的经营的一个模式，那这样的话呢，我们在做一个新投资的一个过程里面，我们的回收，而且我们的报酬率呢，才会去做同步的提升，而且呢，我们的市场呢，也在做不断的一个成长，这是一个非常重要的一个思维哦。所以呢，我们看到就是说，哎，在第一接触下，你到底看见了什么？所以我们连锁总部的每一位的一个呃业主也好，或者是你是加盟的业者也好。你真的是必须要去静下心来，就说，哎，现在的问题是什么？因为我们台湾在疫情，我们有跟其他国家不一样的地方。因为为什么？我们台湾没有发生封城这件事情，哦，没有你在家上班这件事情很少，哦，但是呢，国外这些事情到现在都不断的在发生哦，所以封城产生的连锁加盟，或者是在你跟消费之间的一个。沟通或者是产品的一个推销，你这些问题里面你怎么去解决？所以呢，你必须要有一个新的一个发想。那这个新的发想，你必须要找到你的解决的方案，然后做你的市场的改变哦。如果你能够有这样的一个思维，你就在改变市场，而且市场在重分配的过程里面呢，你也占了一一一句的一个地方哦，所以你会领导整个一个市场哦。所以我们看到就是说，哎。连锁加盟的一个品牌跟它的一个数位转型，其实一个非常重要的部分就是整个我们刚刚所提到你的商业模式，你的商业式模式是什么？就诚如我们今天的一个论坛哦所提出来的，你怎么去运用你的智慧化、你的数位化，而且建立一个新的生态系的伙伴关系？那这些东西里面呢，就是完完全全要去建立你的连锁的。国际大品牌，那这些国际大品牌的实现的一个部分，必须要有好的场域哦。那这场域的场域的内容，就是你自己的总部跟你的店面
店家。那这些场域的实现，你可以收集到非常非常多的资讯。那透过资讯的部分呢，你可以对你的产品跟服务进行创新，跟它整体的一个发展哦。那总而言之呢，我们看到就是地间出入下的一个连锁加盟总部，你的改变呢，必须向变形从事的一个发展，而且呢，你是一个发散式的。那在发散式里面呢，你必须在集中在整个一个啊营运总部。那这营运总部的一个内容，包括你的生产，包括你的消费者，包括你的资讯，包括你的数据哦。而且你要找到对的一个第三方的一个伙伴关系。那非常重要的，怎么去运用现在的。多媒体的传播，去连接你国内外的社的一个社群，来传递你的品牌优势、跟你的服务优势，还有你的产品优势哦。那这样的话呢，就能够去快速接触到你的潜在的一个消费者。这是我们讲的哦，市场是模糊的哦，所以你看不到很多个你潜在的一个消费者。但是呢，你透过这样的一个工具的一个传递之后呢，你可以接触到非常多的一个关系的一个发展哦。所以呢，我们看到连锁总部呢，其实一个非常重要的，你怎么去做你的一个，我们刚刚所提到，不管是生态系也好，或者是平台经济也好，你怎么让你的企业改变，而且能够成功？其实那个非常重要的一个一个思维啊、哦。那台湾呢，我们技术是非常强哦，但是呢，我们台湾比较缺的部分就是说，哎，你怎么去做你的人文关怀，还有环境的一个关怀，这些所谓的人文哲学哦。所以呢。西方国家里面或先进国家里面在谈谈创新呢，他第一步的一个思维就是：哎、欸，我怎么去透过这样的一个人文关怀跟人文的一个哲学里面呢，去做我在技术跟我的服务的一个创新哦。那这样的话呢，你的市场会变得一个扩大，而且你会去做一个市场的一个对接跟整个一个创新跟服务呢。我想这些东西里面都是回归到以人为本，一个非常重要的一个。啊、呃，创新的一个概念跟你的连锁总部的一个经营的一个概念哦。那接下来呢，我们看几个案例的一个分享哦。那首先呢，我们看到这个哇，我们上市上个月的公司哦，就王品集团。那王品集团呢，它发展了也几十年的一个一二十年的一个时间了、哦。那从过去的店面到现在，不断的在做一个全球的一个扩充哦。那在整个一个疫情的一个发生哦，也对它产生非常大的一个影响哦。那你怎么去在整个一个全球总部跟在疫情之下，你怎么去做一个经营管理跟调试啊？那我们看到就是说，哎，王品集团在整个一个呃餐饮的一个连锁的一个总部里面，他们也想破头啊，就是你怎么去找出你的问题，你怎么去做连接，你怎么去提供整个一个知识的一个创新哦、啊。那这个一个解决的一个方式呢，说除了做过去强调所谓的多品牌跟总部的经营之外，它目前呢就是。从去年前年开始呢，就不断的去导入整个一个数位化、科技化跟智慧化，在整个一个连锁加盟总部的一个应用哦。所以呢，我们看到就是说，哎，它在整个网品这么多一个多品牌之下，它整合成为一个丰美食这样的一个 A P P 哦。那这个 A P P 里面呢，为网品呢打造一个所谓的一个连锁加盟总部的一个电商。或者是说线上的百货公司，甚至于线上跟线下的一个一个 O to O 呃 O 好线上结合线下，你可以在线上买东西，你也可以来我店店面做一个体验，一个多元的一个发展哦。那再来，透过这样的一个消费的新闻，它可以收集非常非常多的一个数据。那通过数据之后，它可以哎、欸、推波说哎、欸、你是生日，我可以送你什么样的礼物？按、啊、来电你要送什么东西？那通过这样的一个东西里面呢，它在餐点。的一个分配跟风险的管理呢，而且降低食安的一个危机的呃一个挑战之下呢，它做一个更好的一个整个一个发展哦。所以呢，这些东西里面就是我们看到，就是说啊、呃，你在整个一个连锁加盟总部，你在数位化也好，你在整个经营也好，一切都是还是要以人为本，想看到整个一个消费者的一个需求，而且整个消费形态的改变哦。所以餐前、餐中、餐后。透过这样的一个系统性跟资讯化的一个整体的改变哦，在整个一个经营呢，我们看到，哎，数字会说话，整个一个一个一个
一个产值跟它的营收呢，就不断的在往上去做一个成长的一个部分哦。那过去呢，也遭遇到，哎，我这个系统怎么去做调整？那我的这些所谓的新闻伙伴、这些资讯的伙伴，怎么去满足我的语言跟我的需求？那这些东西都不断的在做整个一个冲击，来打造完整的一个生态系跟它的一个生态圈。这是王品的一个一个案例哦。那再来，我们也同样看到，这是另外一个整个一个上市柜的一个。一个案例是瓦城哦，那瓦城的一个概念，我们也看到说，哎，瓦城在台湾的整个一个发展，它也在遍地做一个整个一个开那个啊、呃、开店的一个一个一个一个一个发展哦。那开店的发展之下，同样的在整个一个规模化的发展之下呢，它也面对到说，哎，我等我的店面的规模不断的放大的过程里面，我怎么去维持我的服务品质这件事情，而且呢，在疫情。来临的之下呢，我怎么去让我的线下我原来的客户能够继续往前去走哦？所以它设计了整个一个虚拟厨房，也是透过资讯化、智慧化的一个 A P P 的一个部分，而且呢，从定位来电服务整个一个构思的一个发展，而且呢，打造全新的 S O P， 让它的菜单的一个设计哦，也引进了更多消费者的意见，让它整个一个创新在厨房的运用的部分呢，能够做一个更好的一个发展哦，这是。整个一个瓦城的一个一个一个发展的一个内容哦，那再来我们看一下美国的一个案例哦，就是达美乐，我们想我们台湾也有哦，就是啊披萨的一个部分哦，那这些东西里面它一个非常重要的一个运用呢，就包括它的整个一个订单的一个数位化哦，那透过订单的数位化里面，它在做整个一个串流，那这些串流的一个部分，包括说哎，我从你订单来，在我的生产线。到我送货到消费者的手中里面呢，我把它整个一个流程呢，透过我的追踪系统，哦，能够去做整个一个讯息的一个串流，能够追踪整个一个订单的一个进度啊、哦。那为什么要做这么一件事情呢、哦？那其实就是我们刚刚所提到的，就是要取得客户的一个信任。那另外呢，在整个一个管理呢，也能够去达到整个一个透明化哦。那未来整个一个发展的一个一个内容，可能就是说我们刚刚所提到，因为封城，因为这些的东西里面，你必须要做低接触。那低接触，你有什么样的一个服务的内容？那未来，那可能在发展整个一个无人车、无人机的一个送货，在整个一个热点的一个外送哦。所以我们看到它这些东西里面都是不断的在做整个跨域、跨界的一个整合。所以我们看到就是说，哎。目前整个一个全球连锁加盟总部的一个发展哦，因为疫情的一个发生，已经产生非常大的一个质变，跟它的一个科技化。那这些科技化跟它的质变，就是我们刚刚所提到的一个平台跟总部的关系。你有没有回到整个一个人文哲学跟整个一个思维哦？所以这些的一个设计里面，不是因为科技哦，是因为要解决消费者的痛点。那这些痛点还包括它的。管理上的一个执行上的一个痛点的一个内容哦，那再来我们看一下娟豆腐，这也是台湾整个一个呃上市柜的一个公司，这是我们连锁总部的一个典范哦哦，那这些典范的一个东西里面，就是说哎你怎么去做好你的智慧的一个出餐哦？那我们看到其实国内的一个很多连锁总部呢，也因为我们的台湾的智通讯的一个发展，包括特别是在软体。的一个开发也也为这些连锁总部也发展出一些新的一个内容。那这些的内容里面呢，就是包括整个一个厨房的一个显示系统。那这厨房的一个显示系统，过去呢，我们接到我们要拿一张单子写一写，然后送到柜台，柜台再送到那个我们的后台里面，然后送到厨房里面去做整个生产，然后再再送回来哦。那现在都不用了哦。因为现在一个低低接触的一个整个，而且智慧化的一个管理呢，必须在整个一个市场的一个显示系统里面，一个非常完整。那这个市场的一个显示系统有什么好处？在我的一个前台跟后台，能够去做及时性的 real time 的一个服务了。而另外一个非常重要，透过这些数据里面，我可以马上得到每日、每周、每年整个不同的数据，我可以进行整个一个分析哦。那再来就是整个 ERP 的一个系统的一个服务，能够我们可以对于整个一个食材的一个控制，然后呢，我们也透过这样的一个精准的一个运送的一个服务哦。另外呢，也透过 AI 的分析，对定位的系统，或者是我的 VIP 的客户，或者是我要提供什么样的一个精准的一个形象，那这些东西里面呢，都跟智慧化、数位化。跟人与人之间的一个行为，还有低接触，产生一个非常大的一个质变哦。那透过这些这些的一个优化的过程里面呢，能够优化出整个一个
呃翻桌率，然后你的优化你的出餐的速度，而且呢你在食材的运用的部分呢，也能够去更加的一个啊运、呃、用的非常好的一个部分哦。那再来，我们看一下啊、呃，对岸的海底锅的一个智慧的一个餐厅哦。那海底锅的一个方式呢，也同样的，它也是慢慢走向智慧厨房或者是虚拟厨房这样的一个概念哦。那这样的虚拟厨房跟智慧的厨房里面，它在整个一个生产的过程里面，就是在知识管理的整合系统这一件事情呢，它产生了一些新的一个创新哦。那知识整合的管理系统里面呢，包括我的菜、我的肉、我的汤底、我的调味料等等之类的，我能够去算出它的生命周期，而且呢，我能够去做精准的一个预期跟它的进货的一个部分哦。那透过这些东西里面，我再透过 RFID 这样的一个监控的一个品质，而且呢，我能够做整个一个智慧出菜哦，而且呢，我能够透过机器、无人机器这种所谓的一个送菜。的一个过程哦，所以这些东西里面都跟整个一个智慧化大数据，而且呢体验经济无,无人化，另外一个整个一个非常重要的 AI 整个一个决策系统导入到这一块哦，所以这些东西里面呢都是整个华人的一个餐饮总部呢在做非常大的一个改革。那这些改革的部分，那我中小型的连锁总部要怎么去应应哦？那中小型的总部呢，或许有一些东西可以。参考这些目前是领导品牌的、哦，那我怎么去急起直追？或许呢，能每个人呢都必须要去盘点我们的一个竞争的优势，找出我们的市场的一个精准的市场。那再来呢，就是我们要建构我们自己的一个生态系的智慧服务这这样的一个内容。那生态系的这样的一个内容，我们也必须要去做打开智慧来怕秒，把现在碰到的危机呢。看到一个潜在的一个机会，让我们能够去更往前的去走哦。那我的分享呢，就到这边，好，谢谢大家。Thank you, Mr. Huang, for your presentation. Today, we also invite companies of the Taiwanese chain restaurant ecosystem to have a panel discussion to talk more about the current situation and the future trends in this industry. My friends online, good evening. Welcome to the Digital Transformation in Chain Restaurant Ecosystem Forum. I'm Li Huiling, Deputy Secretary General of Taichung. First of all,、um, I would like to thank all the representatives for coming here to share their opinions with us. First of all, I would like to、uh, introduce uh, first uh, Mr. Ke, Deputy Secretary General of Association of Chain and Franchise Promotion. And then we have Mr. Wang Brand. Officer of Yangqi International Company. Third, Mr. Miss Kang, CEO of La Fresh Information Company. Miss Liu, Marketing Business Manager of Advantech. Last but not least, Miss Mr. Chen, Chairman of iHome Smart Technology. Welcome. Big data, AI, and all the new technology has emerged rapidly, which has caused great impacts on all the industry. Makes digital transformation a really crucial, essential for, part for companies to grow. For catering companies, more and more generations, new generations, are focused on individualized and good quality service that becomes the mainstream, the main demand of the market. After COVID nineteen,、uh, more and more、um, food delivery service has emerged. How can、um, chain restaurants have a better transformation and adopt new technology to help themselves transform and manage their company better in order to retain the customers and also retain the talents? That is the problem, and that is the challenge we're discussing today. That is why we invite several successful Russian companies and companies in Taiwan to talk about the issue. First of all, I'd like to ask Mr. Ke. We know that、uh, Association of Chain and Franchise Promotion has more than 500 business members in Taiwan. So I would like to ask,、uh, what is the situation, the status quo of、uh, Chain franchise restaurants in Taiwan. Thank you. Friends online, hi. I'm 
I'm Deputy Secretary General of Association of Chain and Franchise Promotion. We're glad to share with you here about the status quo of a franchise restaurant in Taiwan. We have more than 500 business members, uh, chain restaurants in Taiwan, small companies and to big companies. Some of them has advanced, uh, has advanced and have a really good performance like My Wei Deng, My Warm Day. And they have a lot of energy to promote themselves. However, we have a lot of SMEs when they are transforming, they face a shortage of money, capital, or even talents. I think that is because of three aspects. First, talent. That means that the supervisor or the executive of the company, they are on the same page with all the engineers and all the employees. So we have to see that if their plans of digital trans transformation has aligned to uh, the will of all the executives. If not, they will face a lot of challenge. Second, for traditional uh, chain restaurants, they are really unfamiliar with uh, digital transformation. Only on the en engineer uh, know more about the Paul system and know how to create a management system. For talents, during the digital process information, we want we have to know how to use big data and to and to use a lot of method to analyze the data of our customers. Do we have such uh, specialists to to process the data? These are the three problems and challenges we are facing right now. During the process, we need to adequate to equip with certain skills. However, a lot of traditional chain restaurants they are unfamiliar with such skill, and that is something that we can ask and exchange ideas with all the speakers. Maybe in the future, that we will have more integrations and interaction with such companies. The third part is that these companies are from, are from not familiar with all the procedure and all the process. Last year, because of COVID-19, a lot of traditional companies are forced to transform, forced to adapt, adopt a new kind of method. However, they are still unfamiliar with such a process, which caused problems to their uh, in-store traffic law and their product managing process. They still, uh, they certainly, they have a lot of online orders. They don't have, they have problem prioritizing the offline and online users. That caused a lot of problems to not only employees and also uh, sales person or sell, sales on in the store. Next, I want to ask Mr. Wong from Yangqing International. My way then, it's a very uh, appealing brand for the youngsters. I also really applied a lot of digital tools and really integrate offline online customers who provide better service. I want to ask uh, Mr. Wong. We know that starting 2014, my way to start to use uh, digital tools for transformation. So I want to ask Mr. Wong, uh, in digital transformation, do you have any experience or any other vision, any results you want to share with the audience today? Thank you. I think the goal of my warm day has always been to be provide better service for our customers. That is the top priority of our brand. For breakfast, we really have to make the food after we get the order. So we think maybe if the 
our customers can uh, place their order in home, then they can get their food when they arrive at the store. This saves a lot of time. Oh, that the system we developed uh, since 2014. We focus on franchising, but we also focus on customers. So the, we have to consider all their needs. In digital application, we often came up with a lot of management systems for our franchisees to to better manage their stores. We hope that our franchisees can uh, spend less time on reading all the reports. They can all read clearly on our systems. Also, they can spend this time, a lot of time, to focus more on our uh, customers to provide better servers to convey, convey our warmth to the customers. We hope that uh, digital tools is the help to, to, for us to provide a more ideal service for our customers, which will bring a lot of benefits to, to the growth of the company. Thanks, Mr. Wong, for the speech. Just like Mr. Wong said, when we are doing a business, it's really important to convey the warmth to our customers and make them feel that we put their needs at heart. Thus, we, if we want to expand our market, expand our business, we have to integrate uh, new tools, uh, digital tools. They, just like Mr. Wong said, they have very a lot of successful stories cooperating with uh, La Fresh. Next up, I want to ask the CEO from La Fresh and also marketing business manager from Aventec to share with us. What are the uh, problems we encountered and what are the situation right now when we are integrating digital technology into uh, restaurants? Thanks for the introduction and for the opportunity. And I'm really honored to be here to speak with uh, one of my business partners. I would say I'm. we're also growing with our customers. First of all, let's uh, take a look at a video. These are the solutions that we want to offer to our customers. We make our display more stylish. And we also create a lot of uh, tablet order apps and QR order system for our customers. Besides, uh, to better help our headquarters, we have a wise management system to allow them to read the reports and have a better management on the cloud. Third, we have ebook system, cloud application platforms, and other services. In Taiwan, catering and FNB is actually we are really competitive among the world. We have always been serving our headquarters, chain headquarters, their service in South Asia. And after and recently, we have joined Keysta Group for providing better service. We keep offering um, better service, better system for all the brands. Most importantly, we provide individual service for each and every brand based on the systems we have. Like I said, FMB food and beverage is really competitive. And really competitive among the world. That is something that Taiwan uh, can uh, put more effort on. So far, we have served more than 20,000 uh, chain restaurants. 
and we found out that all these headquarters already expand their markets overseas and they need to have a better management system to collect all the data they they gathered overseas to the headquarters in Taiwan. That is why we create a system allow them to do so. Just like my warm day said, we put a lot of important reports, we collect all the reports on the system for our customers, our headquarters to see. For our solutions, we have a front desk and back desk automation, like post, kiosk, and table or tablet ordering and cloud system. I think model-wise, we focus on omni-channel platforms, which is to create an ecosystem on a single platform. If we want to expand our business to Southeast Asia, we have to integrate it with their own ecosystem. So we have to select our business partners wisely. For our data platform, that I would say this platform is the key to the growth of company. How do we use the data we collected from our customers to add value to the company? All in all, uh, we, uh, LaFresh, want to offer a platform that can allow companies to base on basing Taiwan to expand their markets around the world, not only in Southeast Asia, but to Japan, uh, US, and Canada and other countries. These are all very some successful successful stories we have and can be looked up online. Really, last, I want to say I'm really glad to be here today to share our stories with uh, with you guys. Miss Liu, fellow speakers, hi. And I'm really glad to have this opportunity to speak with you guys and speak to the friends online. Now we have a company, a franchise restaurant in Taiwan for a really long time. And since 2013, we have dedicated in promoting digital systems in Taiwan. Every single year, we, besides collaborating with companies in Taiwan, we also uh, cooperating with other com companies and we come up with reports. So these are the challenges we are facing. First, we have the uh, decrease of budget and the stock problems. And most importantly, how do we retain our employees and also retain our talent to become to make a better system. These are the challenges and problems that will be encountered in the near future. As we are partnering with, with these companies, whether in consulting or when they're opening stores, their problems can be divided into these three categories. First one is to lower the cost, because when, when they're open the cost, they have daily expenses, so they want to lower the cost as much as possible and to see uh, if their uh, income has already hit the revenue ceiling. Second, if they can have a better management to, from their uh, direct directly on store to their franchisee to their chain, other chain stores. And third one is to improve revenue at the same time lower the cost. These three categories seem really easy and these goals seem easy to achieve. However, it's rather difficult. Now Young Advantag use AI and digital service to help improve the system of these companies. These three 
topics、uh, for Evan Tech. We use modularized system to help our customers to come up with their systems. From the experience of our customers, from a better management, and also when they're open, when they're opening a new store, we will also see if the、uh, traffic flow is okay in a certain、uh, business area. These are all the things that we、we'll、consider and will be encompassed within the system. Besides. We also provide a better management system for them to control the food safety and also have a better、uh, arrangement of their employees. These are all included in our modularized system, and in the end, we will collect all the data back to the cloud system of Yanhua's headquarters. And these are the services we are continue providing for our、uh, customers. Thank you for the wonderful speech for where our two very successful companies, Chinese restaurant companies in Taiwan, to share how they add values with their systems to the restaurants in Taiwan. Now, because of IoT and AI, we have more and more technology related to online services, especially because of COVID nineteen. An online service has become a top topic、uh, of the world. Now we have Miss Chen, Chairman of Home Smart Technology, I Home Smart Technology. To share with us the trend of online store、uh, service in Taiwan and where the opportunity is. Thank you. iHome Smart Technology has devote has been developing in developing、uh, smart vending machines. We all know that because of the pandemic, online service become the trend around the world. Japan used has most online、uh, machines in the world and create a lot of business opportunities around the world. In Korea, they have online stores to sell high end cell phones, and also in in. U.S. Amazon is also opening online stores. Since 2014,、uh, we have devoted in developing smart vending machines. We start to focus on zero touch technology and also new kind of retailing、uh, opportunity. And because of the pandemic, we were、uh, we drew a lot of attention from media. Uh, bottom right, bottom right, downside. We can see、uh, one of the experience、uh, stories, successful stories. We put smart vending machine into one of temples in Taiwan. Vending machines、uh, does not require large space. With this really small space, we can sell sell cosmetic products, vegetables, and on, and even provide pre order、uh, service. With this. System is very modern, very smart. We want to build a really、uh, professional international system that offer twenty four seven services, and all at the same time, from、uh, equipment to the software system, we keep upgrading. We provide various provide make sure that our products can be served under various of temperatures, and making more、uh, human base, making more、uh, considerate, and allow、uh, compute allow、uh, operators and business can use their just their users smart、uh, smartphones to control the smart vending machine. Not only for、uh, customers and also for businesses, they are really a really good opportunity for them. One of our clients is selling traditional food, and they use our smart vending machine to sell their their products. Before. When their customers are trying to take their food, pre-order food, they have to wait in line. They have to、uh, book an hour. But with smart vending machine, they can go to pick their products whenever they want. 
In the past 20, 20, two to three years, these are the uh, successful stories we have. We, uh, we are cooperating with luxury brands and hotel brands and really a lot of famous brands in Taiwan to provide uh, pre-order service and pickup service. Even Bracewood brands also use our vending machine to allow their customers to pick up the food whenever they want. I think in the future, we have to consider it. Online uh, traffic can be, can be transformed into offline traffic. Um, smart vending machine can be um, become a location for customers to take their to take their products they ordered before. So a total integration of these two areas could be a trend. For opportunities, we would say that uh, because of the smart machine, a smart vending machine can be placed in a lot of places, and we can provide individualized service for. For every uh, customers, when whenever they want, and for for the machine part, we also come up with a lot of models of the machines that it's that is solid and strong. We improvise our the, the traditional way of vending machine that allows uh, businesses to control uh, remotely, and they max the max the. Uh, Data collection much easier. Customers can also uh, buy a lot of products and and pick up the order, pick up the product at one time, and which saves a lot of time for our customers. Every business is at their own edges, so we provide individual service that fits their marketing strategy and allow them customers to pick a the the location. Pick up location they want, and use QR code to scan and pick up the order, pick up the product, or even use a code to pick up the product they order. These, this is one of the another successful story. We cooperated with a coffee brand. They can use the vending machine to. Uh, pick up the order and even share the drinks with their friends online. The most important thing is that we can use a system to control all the smart vending machine limits, uh, data collection, and all the other aspects more easier. Thank you, Ms. Shen. Smart catering industry for upstream and downstream operators and all the businesses are trying to adopt a new smart system to better adapt to the trend and improve the industry. That's what the situation we're seeing right now. Taiwan companies, franchising companies in Taiwan are also grasp the opportunity and are looking forward to expand internationally. Next, I want to discuss that we have so many advantages and we have companies ex explore and expand internationally and win a lot, win a green reputation for the brand. What are the future the opportunities in the future? Maybe let's ask Ms. Liu from Avantech. This is also the problem that we ask ourselves uh, from the past two years. The government has been adapting the policy to send uh, companies to new to South Asia countries. Mostly, they focus on uh, technology companies. Uh, to enforce the new South Wan policy. However, uh, they don't really include uh, brands like My Warm Day, who directly serve the customer. My, for me, I go to South Asia and also China companies a lot. We'll say that uh, the Taiwanese chain restaurant has a lot of opportunities there. They sell, we can say that uh, hot pots and local foods, a lot of Taiwanese style food are served 
there. We are trying to enforce New South Wales policy for technology companies. We also need a government to help the uh, food and beverage industry to expand to uh, New South Wales to Southeast Asia countries. When when we expand to this that territories, sometimes we have trouble connecting with their pol pol system, and we have to spend a lot of energy to communicate with the franchisees in Southeast Asia countries. But with the, but my opinion is that if government with can help us with a new southbound policy, with to help us better connect with the system. Uh, in Southeast Asia, they'll be more ideal. But the difficult part is that, for example, uh, when we are having a brand in in the in the country, they often open as a direct owned stores in the country. When they set up the stores, they start the franchising in the country, and for take Taiwan and Thailand for example, they already mature in the in the market in the franchising market, but they have trouble in connecting with the Taiwanese headquarters. For Evan Tech, we have more than 35 branches around the world to help us to connect with uh, local branches, local franchisees, and to help them to know better about the uh, digital transformation in Taiwan and integrated with the local market, local uh, franchisees. That is, we're still doing this right now, but uh, however, it's still very difficult and spend a, and cost a lot of time and energy to for communication. Thus, uh, in Avon Tech, we offer a, a lot of small uh, module units for the local franchisees. If you give them a really huge platform for them to manage, they will be kind of time consuming. However, with this small module unit, um, these companies, these franchisees, can use this module to better manage the, uh, the store. There they have a executive to manage and to hold the stores locally. In Taiwan, we companies can just visit the stores and check, make sure they and follow the rules. However, for local franchisee franchisees, it's really hard for Taiwanese headquarters to to make sure if they enforce the the, the laws. Especially after the pandemic, we use the cameras and CCTVs in every local franchisees abroad to collect the data and, you, to, and for the headquarters in Taiwan to better manage uh, to see if they follow the rules. We see on the platforms that there are small modules to control the situation and to see that if the pulse the situation of the pulse system. In the end, we want to provide a better management system that our national team and uh, our local franchisees and also franchisee overseas can have a better management uh, of the whole system and of, of the whole situation on cloud. Thank you for the question. Um, I'll give some experience, share some experience here. For La Fresh, in recent years, we are fortunate enough to cooperate with many large companies. One of the company is listed in Canada, which is called Just Kitchen. Just Kitchen is expanding to Hong Kong. And 
they have some kind of system problems on systems when they go on site on Hong Kong. Because they found out that the ecosystem in Hong Kong is very different from Taiwan. Now, we already noticed the problem by having another cooperation with the, another company in Singapore. This company also is uh, representing Moss Burger and other big chain restaurants. And we also cooperate with them and finish many big cases. They use a total solution we offered from this. Let's bring back to Taiwan. Taiwan is actually the king of tea, the king of breakfast. I read a book before, it was written by Japanese by Japanese. He said that Taiwan is the king of breakfast, it provides all kinds of breakfast. Also, Taiwan is renowned for its hot pot. One of my one of our clients is also serving hot pots and all. we help them to expand them expand the territory to Malaysia. Although um, for this successful experience I still have to say this path is rather difficult because if you had headquarters in Taiwan then you have to collect all the information overseas information back to Taiwan. That is the challenge we're all facing now. Where's the opportunity? For example, uh, we, we, I recent, we recently cooperated with a really big company. They, they're expanding in, they're opening branches in Australia and Indonesia. We all know that uh, most uh, U.S. companies that tend to use uh, systems made from China. However, uh, they found out that systems made in China stopped working when they're when they're used overseas because of security, safety, and other problems. But for Taiwan system made by Taiwan. The oil service are kept in Taiwan, so people may feel more comfortable using our system. These are all uh, very practical issues when encountering. Now, system made by China might be cheap, but it's sometimes unreliable and cannot be used in Southeast South Asia market. These are the pen points of headquarters in Taiwan and in other countries. Taiwan is a king of hot pot and breakfast and, and tea. We have to share our uh, domain knowledge and make sure that in form they can uh, use our SOP. And in the meantime, headquarters in Taiwan can maintain a certain degree of control. It requires domain knowledge. Between countries, and they need integration, which requires experience. Besides, we still need on-site service. Besides cloud service, we still need on-site service. For example, uh, countries like Indonesia have different many different islands, so we need to develop better management system for them to, to use around on these islands. I think we're still overcoming and improving from these difficult situations, but I'm glad to see we have more and more successful examples these days. We're not only a king of hot pot, king of tea, we're also a king of bread. One time I was in LA representing Thai truck to find business partners in LA. When we're negotiating with a really big supermarket in LA, one of the uh, the, the representative of the supermarket asked as if we can open a bakery in the supermarket because some of their Mexican clients really like bread made, in, made from Taiwan and also rice. When they set up the bakery, there are people lining up uh, in front of the stores. They're all Mexican customers. So we can see that we are deeply loved for our bread. Thanks for the sharing. 
of the two ladies for your insights. The point is, through the integration of the system and the help of technology companies integrating with local companies to expand the market, that will increase the speed to of communication with the local market and add also adding value, especially under the situation of pandemic. Next, I want to ask Mr. Wong. As far as I know, you have several projects to expand overseas. What are the plans you are having right now? What kind of strategy should we have to expand overseas with our uh, with the cooperation with uh, technology companies in Taiwan? Um, my one day, it's not going abroad right now. But another brand of ours, uh, Fried Chicken Master, is from the perspective of the brand. I would like to say that we often say that Taiwan has its own national team to promote brands. However, um. If we the brand we promote are all in the same industry, then it's not useful. If we can integrate businesses from different industries, then we can distribute our missions, and then we will become stronger. We will have more strength for the local customers. Uh, they want to see the successful, marginalized, successful stories of ours. Just like May said, they need total solutions. They need to see what we do from step to step. Then well, they will have more uh, confidence to cooperate with us. For headquarters in Taiwan, when they want to expand the market, it's very important to in integrate with local uh, stores. Allow us to uh, run things more smoothly, not worry about all the management systems or different kind of systems. So we can spare more energy, focus on how to provide better service to to people in other country in the country, and bring back the data to the headquarters in Taiwan. That is what we want to achieve uh, as a as a headquarters in Taiwan. Modularize solution. That's the key. I agree, because being able to replicate is really important point of a business model to increase more value and more long term value to the brand. Next, we would like to ask Mr. Ke. Is there any suggestions you would like to offer to the business member of the association when they're expanding abroad? The chain restaurants in Taiwan when they are expanding overseas, just like all the speakers has mentioned, the beverage and food in Taiwan is really competitive around the world. Is there? Expanding, they need several different kind of business models. The first one is authorized franchise, franchising. Authorize the brand to the agent, local agent, and we just have to authorize the brand to a local agent, and they run the business there. The second one. Is the Taiwanese headquarters then or send send a team to the local market and run the business there? And owner is the Taiwanese franchisers. Between these two models, is to is a co-investment with the local agent. So these are we can see a, var a variety of kind kind of models. The pen points and the challenge will be different. Uh, depends on what kind of models we use. Problems like law, logistics, uh, cold chain. These are the problems that will be encountered when we are expanding a market overseas. 
what we can offer, we can authorize, is the technique we own by Chinese headquarters and what kind of image we want to convey in the local market. If we want to run a business locally ourselves, then we have to integrate a uh, local system with our own system because it's a really different market. New challenges arise. For example, uh, we expand to Thailand market. We sell fried chicken, Chinese fried chicken in Thailand. We thought that fried chicken should be sold on, on the street. However, the stands are open in the department stores. So you can see the difference between cultures. That's why we need to reshape our brand to better tap into the international market. I believe that if we work together, we can uh, try and definitely eventually we'll achieve the goal. Thanks, Mr. Ke, for sharing and suggestions. There are really three crucial uh, solutions for system integration. We need the help of chain restaurants. And also, to expand quickly, we need chain restaurants need the help of technology companies. And most importantly, we need the help to uh, relocate and integrate all the resources to offer platforms that people can uh, have a better communication. Taicha is very honored to become the bridge for Taiwanese brand to international market. For example, we have promoted a tea brand to international market because our matchmaking service under a program promoted or sponsored by the government. We help the brand to uh, integrate and cooperate with the really huge brand in the international market. And the brand owns a lot of supermarkets in Indonesia. It helped the tea brand in Taiwan to promote their brand in Indonesia. We hope that through uh, all the branches in of Taicha, then we can keep promoting and keep helping brands and chain restaurants in Taiwan to expand to expand to the world and to share our spirit, to share the warmth, to share our likes of the food to the world, and that the world audience and everyone in the world to enjoy and to know more about the strength and advantage of the chain restaurants in Taiwan. So we should strive together and let's hope that we can have a better service and do better to provide better service to the customers in the future. This is also the goal of Taicha. Since 2017, under the guide of our president, we have been promoting Taiwan business to the world, promoting uh, digital transformation. You can see that where we're in right now, uh, Taicha Studio is uh, developed and built because of COVID-19, because of the trend. I also invite all our speakers to, to use our studios if you, you need it. Besides, we have all kinds of new marketing ways, including video marketing and online forums and also online exhibitions to promote um, our brand to cope with the COVID-19 situation. Today, we are really glad to have all the successful uh, companies and also chain restaurants representative to share with us uh, a smart uh, restaurant and also a digital transformation in Taiwan. I, I believe that we all learned a lot today. And really, I want to, at the end, I want to say thank you for our friends online who really uh, spend their time watching this forum. During the panel, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them by clicking the link in the description box. We will collect the questions and invite the speakers to answer them as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we conclude today's forum. 
Once again, if you have any questions, please submit them by clicking the link in the description box. We will collect the questions and answer them as soon as possible. Besides, please help fill the questionnaire to let us receive your feedbacks. On behalf of Taisha, thanks for tuning in to the forum today. Thank you for your participation, and we hope to see you soon.